Hello, my name is Theo and today I'm going to show you how to select and install the pipes for your irrigation system. The most important aspect of your irrigation system is the amount of water that is available. The bigger the amount of water available, the more nozzles and sprinklers you can operate with one irrigation zone. On the other hand, the smaller the amount of water available, the more zones we need. An irrigation system is usually supplied by a domestic water supply or a groundwater pump. In both cases it is essential to accurately measure the amount of water which is available. If the irrigation is connected to the domestic water supply, please be sure to observe the standards of the protection of drinking water. The available water supply correspondent to the flow rate of a water source at a defined flow pressure. In case of a domestic water connection, the water quantity must therefore be measured depending on the flow pressure. For this purpose, you can use measuring devices that simulate the flow pressure. It is advisable to make a test protocol and to measure and document the water supply at different pressures. As the different components in your irrigation system also work at different pressures. A classic spray nozzle works perfectly at about 2 bar pressure. A rotary nozzle at 2.8 to 3.1 bar. A triple quarter inch gear sprinkler between 2 and 4 bar. Depending on the nozzle. A look at the manufacturer's nozzle table is advisable. With a third charge of 0.5 to 0.8 bar. We take into account the expected pressure loose of the valves, clamp fittings and PE pipes in the irrigation system. If the water comes from a well pump, the pump performance curve of the well pump can be used to determine the measured values. The pump characteristic curve shows the pressure that the pump can generate at a given flow rate. On the x-axis the pump characteristic curve shows the water flow. On the y-axis the corresponding water level in meters. The 28 meters are equal to 2.8 bar. For every 10 meter of water column one bar of pressure increases. In this case the pump still has a flow of 2.5 cubic meters per hour at 2.8 bar. If the pressure increases over 3.2 bar, the flow rate drops to 1.5 cubic meters. Please also take into account the installing deep of these values. If a deep well pump is used. With this information, the nozzles and sprinklers that are used can now be divided into different irrigation zones. So let's take a look at what nozzles and sprinklers we are installed in our plan. We have MP rotator nozzles from Hunter, classic spray nozzles like Heven from Rainbird, or PDC nozzles, but also PGJ rotors and bubblers. When connecting these different irrigation components to the pipe system, they must be taken into account in the same way as the available water quantity. This means that only equipment with the same pressure and precipitation rate can be installed on the same irrigation zone. For example, no classic spray nozzles may be combinated together with rotary nozzles. The precipitation and pressure values of these two nozzles are too different. In the standard settings of IRISketch, the program prevents the connection of irrigation components with different precipitation values to one pipe. More about this later. If sprinklers with standard nozzles are used, they may only be combinated if they have the same nozzle size with the same radius. We recapulate. In order to be able to distribute the existing sprinklers to irrigation zones, we must match the available water quantity, the precipitation values and the pressure requirements of the nozzles. What does that mean in practice? Let us turn to the six PGJ rotors on the large area. By marking these six sprinklers, Irisket shows us six sprinklers in the status bar. 
with a total water consumption of 5083 liters per hour. According to the pump characteristic curve, this is too much for our well pump. Therefore, we have to divide the sprinklers into at least two irrigation zones, which would result in about 2500 liters per hour per zone. This would work according to our pump curve. However, in this case, we have to keep in mind that all PGJ sprinklers are equipped with the same 4.0 nozzle, but we have four sprinklers with 90 degrees radius and two with 180 degrees radius. If we connect the 90 degrees and 180 degrees sprinklers to the same irrigation zone, this would result in uneven water distribution. The sprinklers with 90 degrees radius would apply twice as much precipitation to the lawn area than the sprinkler with 180 degrees radius. Therefore, we distribute the six sprinklers over three irrigation zones. Let's select the water source from the upper left toolbox and place it on the lawn where the fountain is. Now we choose manifold and valve box. We use several valve boxes in this plan. This way we save piping. By pressing the enter key we repeat the last operation. In this case, we use it to select the valve boxes. Let's install the pipes from the water source to the valve boxes. To do this, we select the main pipe under pipes in the upper left toolbox, HDPE and my SDR class. The cursor automatically attaches the pipes to the water source. With a click, we pull the pipe in the desired direction. With one click, we set a node. Another click marks the pipe end here. We can now add an outlet somewhere on the pipe or finish the pipe at this point. The pipe can be pulled at the nodes. When the pipe is marked, we can add a branch in the toolbar down left and extend the pipe to the valve box. With a double click, we can delete a pipe section. Erisketch automatically determines the pipe diameter based on the amount of water. Do determine this by ourselves. We mark the pipe and select set diameter range in the toolbar down left. We see the available diameters and can specify them. In the plan, the elbows are shown in green, the T's in blue, and knots with more than three connections in yellow. The valve boxes are shown in green if they are connected to the water source. If we mark the valve box, we can see in the status bar that no valve has been installed yet. The green node shows us that the valve box is connected to the water source. Next to it, it's a node that indicates that the valve box had no yet been wired to the controller. We will come to this later. In the toolbox down left under alias, we can name the valve box. Valve box 1. Valve box 2. And we call this valve box 3. Now we install the piping to the sprinklers. As mentioned earlier, we have to make sure that we only connect suitable sprinklers to one zone. We select lateral pipe under pipe in the upper left toolbox. And start at the valve box with the first zone.
and the second one. Double click to end and press the enter key to copy the last operation. As you can see, we have not laid the pipe directly to the sprinklers. The connection from the pipe to the sprinklers is not shown in the program. However, they will be shown later in the spec sheet. You can choose in advance whether you want to use swing joints or flex pipes. Let's attach the sprinklers to the pipe. There are two ways to do this. Either we select the sprinkler and click on Attach to pipe in the bottom left toolbox and mark the pipe to which we want to attach the sprinklers. The green marking on the sprinklers shows that it is connected to the pipe. Or we select the pipe and choose Add consumer in the toolbox. Now we can mark all sprinklers that should be connected to the previously selected pipe. If we have connected rotors on one zone, Erisketch automatically blocks this possibility to connect other sprinklers, as the pressure and the precipitation values are too different. We can disconnect and connected sprinklers at any time. To do this, we select Add Consumers again and with a click on the box at the sprinkler they are disconnected. When we select now a valve box, we can see in the status bar how many zones are connected to this box. If we select a zone pipe, the status bar shows us what the zone is called, what pipe are used, the length of the pipe, how many consumers were connected and how much water this zone needs per hour. Here we can also check directly whether the water consumption for a zone does not exceed the amount of water measured and provided in advance. And that's it. Now you know how to install the pipes for your irrigation system. See you next time.